Hello and welcome back to the second episode of my tutorial series for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I'm Icon and in this one we're going to dive deeper into the dungeon. Last episode I left you guys off with a lot of uh, theoretical things, key bindings and stuff, but it will grow easier from here on. So in this episode we will focus more on the strategical aspects of exploration here. And, of course, I will explain a couple of new things, like attacking with range weapons and such things. So, last time, press small m for uh, getting into the skill menu, as soon as this thing is realizing that I'm here again. So, we also learned throwing now. So, throwing works like all the weapons in this game work. There is a minimum skill for darts, so, uh, as soon as you have throwing six, you can use darts perfectly, so that's just how we work. We can also pick up stones to hurl them at our enemies, and well, we're going to do this for the sake of a of tutorial ideas. But I would not use stones too much as a minotaur. So we're going to explore dungeon two, and I'm not going to use auto explore here because it could be dangerous. Whenever you are not too sure about your whereabouts, don't use Auto Explore. It can bring you into really nasty situations. And whenever you're exploring, always keep an eye out on where your next staircase is. Here on the minimap you see these uh, little um, cyan colored dots. They are, they are your staircases up and the magenta ones are down staircases. So this little layout has Three down has all the three up staircases here on one spot because every dungeon level always spawns three staircases of each type three up, three down. That's uh, everywhere, that's standard, so, uh, so to say. There are a couple of uh, exceptions, but we're going to explain them later. And so far, dungeon two shows itself pretty, pretty empty. One word about enemies. Every enemy you kill stays dead, basically. This game has no longer respawning enemies. A couple of versions ago it had that. But nowadays, if a floor is cleared, it is clear. So we found a new scroll, and let's just keep it and try it out at the staircase of the next level. And here we go. There's uh, three enemies here, but we really don't have much to fear about them but we would if i would just take that fight now out in the open so if i would just stay here and fight that that could possibly be pretty bad so instead i'm walking back to this choke point here where i can effectively make sure that only one enemy can attack me at once this is really important all across the game to pull your enemies into choke points where you can minimize the amount of enemies attacking you at once. So, since I don't want to move right now, I press the dot dot button here to wait a turn. So, now these beasties are closer to me, let's start whacking. We are, already know how that works, so not much more to explain. And we just hit level 3. So, level 3 is a point where you get to select what kind of increase in attributes you gain. So, we gain attributes at random at level ups, but at certain breakpoints you can select what kind of level, what kind of attribute you want to have. So, in this scenario, I'll opt in for dexterity because that will enhance my my skills in the usage of shields. You could also opt into strength that would make you hit harder, but here I didn't like to have dexterity below 10, and every race has a certain bias towards stat growth. So minotaurs tend to develop strength on level ups more often than dexterity. You can all check that out in various help documents. You're, uh, you will find all that when you press question mark. And there's a really, really huge amount of uh, information here in the manual contents. And I, if you are really interested in all these, just uh, check out the information about species and such, and you will find a lot of information there. So we're going to keep exploring here instead. 
And here's an endoplasm. So let's check out this dude, X and V. And as you can see here, this I show this dude because he's the first uh, enemy that features spell casting. So not only does he have the usual traits of a slime, it's uh, immune to blinding, it can't see invisible as a matter of fact, it's also mindless, but it can also cast a freeze spell. So you see that spell would deal 1d5 damage, and if you press now small a here or click that, you also get a description of that spell. I highly recommend you to check out how these things work. So I'll wait a turn now and smack it. So the, the nice thing about Minotaurs is they have an extremely high skill in whacking stuff very early on due to the very high strength and a very high aptitude at learning everything combat. Aptitudes are multipliers for the received experience. So basically there is <laughs> the... The Minotaur learns faster than any anybody else when it comes down to fighting, but check out that minus four aptitude on spellcasting. That also means this race is exceptionally slow at learning spellcasting. Now, we've seen here a chainmail, so let's press X and V, and you see here this is a nice upgrade to what we're what we're wearing right now. So let's 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 change equipment this time. Press G to pick it up. And we're now using capital W to wear something. Now, you see, I can select that. You can also mouse click that or, or select the... I always use the the respective letters on the keyboard. It's up to you. And now we equip the chain mail. So press N. And now you see, you start removing your armor. You finish taking off. You start putting on. So this takes several turns of time. Whenever you want to change armor, do that at a quiet and safe space for your own well-being. Now my AC has improved and that's making me happy. Now pressing D and selecting the chainmail to get rid of it, press enter and we're good to go. I'm not equipping the plate armor yet because I want to wait until my armor skill has increased to mitigate that encumbrance a little bit more. It's just like with weapons, you shouldn't equip heavier weapons than you're able to wield. I'm going to demonstrate that later on, on some fitting example and oh my god look at this beautiful fight now this is this is trouble so you also see a nice uh, a nice thing here you see that hawk goblin is uh, in dark gray that means he's way below me that worm is in a bright gray that means we're we're, we're he's a bit below me but but not much and the adder is yellow which means we're pretty even in threat rating. Adders are real menaces in the early game. So when you check that one out, you see it can bite and it can poison you. And really, really nasty about it too is it is fast. That means it will move faster than you. Unlike other enemies that are around us here, so check out that goblin. He, if there's not no um, no notion or or no mentioning of the speed of a creature, you can assume that it's as fast as you. So you can run away from the adder, and poison is can, can be quite deadly. There are potions that uh, cure poison. They're called potions of curing, but as you see here, we have no clue how potion of curing looks like. So we're going to kite back into that tunnel here. So while I was kiting, the goblin tried to attack me and I killed him with the horns. You remember? Capital A, showing the mutations. Eyes have that uh, reflexive headbutt. That's an awesome trait of, uh, of Minotaurs. So we're now kiting back and now as a Minotaur, adders are not, not nearly as deadly as they are to, to more vulnerable species that have a weaker early game. We're going to take it serious, nevertheless. You see, I have these Atropa darts in my inventory, and if I would hit that thing with those, it would be blinded and confused. Wouldn't that be great? So let's do it. To shoot stuff, you use the small f to enter the fire mode. So now when I, I pressed F once and you see, I have now this uh, this trail on my cursor. This shows the uh, line of flight of the projectile and you can also aim with that. 
There's also a couple of commands here. You get that. You can select an action, you can cycle, but we're going to use it with the, with the numpad here to command it and then press F one more time to uh, get it done. So what's important here to see is you, you see a readout here. I only have a 38% chance to hit, but you know, why not try? So press F once, lock onto your target, press F twice. You can also do another thing which works similarly like the reckless fight which is linked to tab we can also kind of like do a reckless range attack by pressing small p then you will throw the your uh or, or fire your neck your your quiver thing at the next best enemy without asking you how to aim at it small p is really cool to to get rid of that um that tedium when you press F and you have to aim, but the F menu is giving you more, more, more. While well, you can aim, you can actually select where to aim and whatnot. So I get, I guess you get the idea. So sadly, we didn't hit the adder ones. That's because adders are also pretty good at evading. So it also has a 62% chance to evade my longsword attacks. So you see, this thing has a lot of. Uh, a lot of shenanigans going on so we're going to try to swing at it now i have exceeded my uh, my options here so i get bitten and i'm poisoned now you see here i have a change here so that yellow portion here is depicting how much damage the poison will do before it wears off poison that deals a certain amount of damage and then it goes away so let's try a second swing that didn't work third swing didn't work step back one more step fourth swing didn't work fifth and now it just that's the thing i just hit it once and followed up with a with a headbutt and the adder is gone so minotaurs ha minotaur fighters have that combination of two attacks not only the weapon but also the only uh, but also the natural attack decent ac a lot of hp and th therefore they can most of the time tank out the damage that the adder will do even if it goes bad like it did here but this is how you should start to, have to tackle more difficult uh, combats so we're taking down that hobgoblin and there's still the worm now if you check out the worm the most dangerous part about this thing is it deals up to 12 freaking damage and it will hit me quite likely so it's also very slow though so that's a very very uh, good thing to know so these dudes we could now also try and kite this thing to death so let's press capital Q to change the item on quiver I don't want to toss a tropa darts at that thing that's the worm I don't want to blind it so we're switching over to the stones now we already know how to fire stuff at the worm either by pressing F and F yet again or P for reckless uh, shooting. So I hit it, but I do no damage. I hit it, I do a little bit of damage, and now I start walking away from that dude. He's very slow, so he won't be able to catch up with me. But sadly, the stones do not enough damage. But if you, if I had a heavier ranged option, I could kill that thing this way. I could also walk around that pillar here, collect those stones and try again, but we're going to kill that worm now, so by 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 bashing it so let's uh whack it with the worms there's one good thing if they start hurting you too much you can always run away from them the worms are basically the first uh, lesson in the game of kiteable uh, and introducing kiteable enemies with the worms you can always decide whether you want to follow that fight any longer or not or you can just uh, kite them and shoot them like I showed you here. So Terrence the Incautious comes into view. This dude is the first unique that we're going to face here alongside with that goblin. You see that question mark right next to his icon? That means he's awake but he didn't realize my presence yet. So I'm going to move away and just hope that we can avoid his attention because you know i don't really want to fight this dude on on such random terms with unique enemies always try to catch the ideal situation when you can like something like that this is pretty okay so we're pressing x and v 
to investigate this dude now. So whenever you meet a unique enemy for the first time, please check them out what they do. They have very, very different skills and traits and sometimes you really need to know how they work to, to accordingly beat them. So this dude here is not much more than a piece of work in pretty good armor. He has a falchion that's not really a good or oh, strong weapon and he's wearing a plus three scale mail of cold resistance that would look good on me i think so we're going to get in there and this is how i always take difficult to more difficult melee enemies first we're going to press capital q again quiver that tropa dart and you know i'll just give it a go i have 61 person chance to hit and i didn't so I'll give it another go, because I consider it extremely useful to debilitate my enemy. If you have stuff like this, something that can confuse, blind, or whatever, use it against melee enemies, it's extremely powerful. So we're now getting closer, and we're starting attacking him. He's blinded and confused, and we now took advantage of that situation so good that he already lost about... 50% of his HP. Now I'll just try to keep going without any precaution, but you see the next swing took me down for 10 HP. I think I'll just uh, give him another Tropa Dart and uh, keep whacking. He's not confused anymore. Well, let's swing one more time. But you saw I was already pretty low on HP. In that situation, if I would have not had the Tropa Darts, I would have used the Potion of Might. But in that situation, the Atropa darts were really what, uh, what turned the tide of the battle there. So this was also difficult because this dude had this uh, chainmail of coal resistance. So I investigate it now and I see it will increase my AC furthermore. So we're going to wear that. Capital W, select that. And not only did my AC go up, my evasion did go up because the encumbrance of that chainmail is lower. That's one thing, heavy armor is really bad at dodging. That's why my character here won't study dodging too much if he's wearing plate armor. Basically, if you plan on wearing plate armor on your character, you don't need to skill any dodging because you will be pretty crappy at it at, at all points of the game. You can, of course, learn it if you really don't know any anymore where to spend your um, experience points into, but you shouldn't. So here's a darts uh, slug. Let's uh, examine that here. This one comes with an innate spell-like ability. You can also ex uh, examine them. And here, this part is the most inter interesting. So this depicts how many squares range a skill has. Sometimes this can be really, really, really interesting to know. We're just going to whack at it. And since most of the floor is already explored, I'm going to auto explore now with small O and I'm done exploring now. So another thing that you can do to traverse dungeon levels quickly, you can press capital G for go and then you get asked where we want to go. So I press now D and now it asks me what level of the dungeon. You see I'm at dungeon level 2 and if I enter 3 now it will automatically check out the next best staircase and take it for me. A pretty uh, convenient way of navigating the dungeon if you are too lazy like I here to, tra to traverse to the next best staircase. We find the scroll here and a ring, finally jewelry. So you see a plus six ring of dexterity and it's green outlined because you always pick up these things. Another thing, I will drop the stones now because they are really bad weapons in general. They are the worst throwing weapon that you can get. Base damage too sucks real hard. I just wanted to have them to show you how to use ranged weapons in general. So a ring of dexterity, it really does what's on the label. It increases my, my dexterity by six. To put it on, you need to press capital P and select the piece of jewelry and put it on. So it didn't really do much. I did now, I have now a dexterity of 17 and my shield rating went up by one. So press capital R to remove and you see here, shield 4, capital P, 
put on shield 5. So that's why I don't want to invest too heavily into dexterity. But it will be good and oh my god. <laughs> yeah, um, random elements of the game. I, I fell into a shaft and I dropped down three floors. So there is a high chance that my character will now die. So every every character will randomly fall in such a shaft trap once in his uh, career in the dungeon branch. So you will have to tank that. Three floors down is the worst case scenario. It can get much worse than that. So usually you get shafted by one to two floors. Well, let's press enter and take it. So I hear the sound of rushing water. That's very, very unfortunate. This uh, depicts that we have a, a portal to a bonus level, but that is on a on a timer. Okay, RNG. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with my scrolls because I still haven't found magic mapping and now I did. So now I press X, capital X, and check out the environment. So I'm pretty sure that the uh, bonus level entrance is here, but I am sad, but I have to see that I get out of here. This is dungeon level six. I want to get out here as quick as possible. An iguana, well, we checked that out. It can bite for up to 15 damage. So these enemies here are extremely dangerous compared to what I'm used to. The jelly down here can corrode you and it does a lot of retaliation damage whenever you hit it. Corrosion lowers your weapon quality and your AC. So I'm just uh, pressing 5 here and pray that nothing comes to get me. And we're heading now directly to the next uh, to the next staircase. Here I found my, my first shop. Shops can be entered just like uh, staircases so with the same symbols there. And I'm checking out what this guy sells. Wands. But sadly, I don't have enough money to buy myself anything. But these wands are pretty good. Wands, well, you can already... I think you can already figure out what they do. So, we're going to explore that as soon as I have some. Let's get upstairs. I'm at dungeon level 5. This is good, but still not good enough. We have to get out of here. So, I found my first wand. A wand of charming. So... This is a really useful tool because it will try to convert a enemy to my side for a period of time. We will put that to good use later down the road. Wands are, are linked to the evocation skill, which means the higher the evocation skill, the more oomph behind the usage of your wand. Since I feel quite desperate right now, I'm going to turn up throwing and I'm going to focus into evocations. Because I have a bad aptitude, I want to learn it as fast as possible. And here we are right in how this game works. Adaptation. It forces me into a very bad situation and now I, I will take whatever power tool I will find and change my skills accordingly. Because wands can make quite the difference and you know a lot of hard hitting enemies are dumb and whose dumb is easily to has no high magic resistance and who has no high magic resistance can be easily charmed so but this dude here is a small demon they are really not that dangerous i just lured him around the corner to have him as far away as possible from the unknown here when i'm in a situation like that i really try to um take any en every enemy and every fight one, at one by one to avoid situations like these. So here we ran into a fully fledged orc war party. So this is pretty bad because they have a priest. Short summary, orcs are pretty harmless for me. Wizards are dangerous because they can confuse you. And priests are extremely dangerous because they have that smiting spell which deals 7 to 17 damage and they also have a pain spell which uh, also it deals a lot of damage and the worst thing about the smiting thing is they can do that even though their buddies are in between them every projectile attack in this game cannot be fired over the heads of uh, of other people it will hit them 
smite spells like the smite of the orcish priest can do. So the first thing I'll do would be to check if I can fire an atropa dart, but I can't. It won't hit the orc priest. It will most likely hit the orc. So what I'm going to do now is step around the corner and make sure that the orc priest doesn't see me, because as long as he doesn't see me, he can't cast stuff at me. So we're going to retreat for now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to step onto that staircase. So I'm now waiting until the orc gets close, and now we're going to fire that Atropa dart and check out if I can hit somebody. There's an invisible orc wizard between me and these, so I'll, ha I'll try if I can kill him. I did, that's very good. I closely monitor now my HP while I'm fighting this to make sure that I immediately react once this happens, the Orc Priest mumbles prayers, so that's where I get out of here. You know, I can only tank two more of these spells, and I don't want that. So I'm stepping onto the staircase, and I'm now going downstairs. So I now have that Orc right next to me. He followed me, and we're going to take him down, and now I can rest up. So... Enemies upstairs will only follow you downstairs if they are on an adjacent tile to you. This is the famous stair dancing. Now we're going to get back upstairs. And now, well, the dude has invoked the rage here again. But it's... He's standing right next to me. So I'm taking one swing. Alright, I hit. Taking two swing. I hit again. Well... We're going to hope that... Okay, we took him down. If the if this fight would have went worse, I would have uh, sipped in that might potion yet again. All right, we did it. I'm resting up. And here's the Dagger of Freezing. This is sadly much weaker than my, my low sword, but weapons with a off something are so-called branded weapons, and they are among the most desirable weapons in the game but not if they are a dagger and you're wielding a sword already. That's because of the massive difference of base damage. So the adder is not particularly uh, frightening. And now we're going to find another up staircase. And now we're already back at D4. Only one floor beneath what we had when we were shafted. In situations like these, you really have to take things very very careful and here's our first ogre so ogres are among the biggest piece of bad news that you can meet early on this dude can deal 17 damage without his weapon and then comes a giant club with which uh, roughly deals uh, similar damage so translates to he can't kill me with two blows so what i want to do now is I'm going to stand here, and I'm now on the staircase, now, now I'm, I'm evaluating. I can either flee directly, but I don't need to, I have one free turn before he gets closer to me, so I'm going to fire one of my Atropa darts. So, that one didn't hit, and now I'm deciding to not go into this. You see this dude is even red and uh, red marked. This, the game does that to show you this enemy is way beyond your danger uh, skill, uh, beyond your skill level. So let's get downstairs and avoid that. So dungeon five might be bad, but standing right next to an ogre is even worse. So we're going to explore here further. And in one of the major lessons of mastering dungeon crawl is to learn that you don't have to take every fight. And you have to learn to avoid a fight to just take the other staircase <laughs> where there's an up staircase right next to that. I think RN Jesus has shown me a very, very nice example of why that's way to go. You see, this is a very keystone lesson in this game. Don't take every fight cheaply. There's an Arbalest. Arbalests are really strong ranged weapons, but they are two-handed uh, ranged weapons. And I don't want to roll two-handed stuff in this run, because... no. Okay, we're going to experiment with our scrolls now. Scroll of Fog. Pretty useful, because it breaks line of sight. Since we had the encounter with the Orc Priest already, I can already show you or tell you what it's good for. With a Scroll of Fog, these priests can't aim at you anymore, because they can't see you anymore. 
really useful tool if you have to run away from enemies like that, for example. Lots of other uses too, but you have to improvise with that. Enchant armor, well, goes without saying. I'm going to enchant my buckler in this uh, regard, because every point of enchantment gives either one shield more or one AC more if it's armor. Now, Scroll of Silence. Now, that's a tragedy that I have wasted that, because Scrolls of Silence are the most powerful tools to shut down casters in this game. Because you see that aura around me? You can't cast spells inside that. Period. Really powerful as a, as a fighter to take down extremely powerful spellcasters. And a scroll of vulnerability. Well, that cuts down magical resistance in half, but, well, that's only important for people that hex enemies a lot. Okay, we're back at Dungeon 3. I think that was a really, really good lesson in survival in this episode. I hope you enjoyed that one, and if there are questions, just drop them into the comment section. Next episode, we will explore the rest of the dungeon levels, which we just skimmed there. And I don't know, maybe I'll find a god even in the next episode. So check it out. I'd be happy if you leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you try and turn on the notification bell as well. There's daily content coming up from my side. I'd be happy to have you. See you guys next time. Bye bye.